Hello, World of Tank Blizzards. It's Littlefinger with a how-to video, how to drive the T-49. This is a Tier 8 light tank, 152mm um, gun, zero for armor, and 72 kilometers per hour as a top speed. So I'm not going to compare this tank to any other tank in the game because, quite honestly, there are no comparisons. First thing I want to point out is you only have heat and HE as your two ammunition types. That means that you are unable to shoot through destructible objects. Also, you have to deal with heat and its finicky pen mechanics in the game as your highest pen. You can see here at 167. You're going to do 560 damage with that. Um, now, obviously the one that you really want to get going in is the HE, but you only have 83 millimeters of pen, but you do get 780 in damage. And let's point out here, dispersion at 100 millimeters, 0.459. It's horrible. Um, there's no telling where this gun is going to shoot. Um, so I'm going to jump into some gameplay, show you how not to drive it, how to drive it, and hopefully let you put together a consistently good battles in this tank because we all know we're grinding credits for it so that we can get the upcoming um, light tanks with the guided missiles. So the first game I'm going to show you here is a total failure. Yamato Harbor, bottom tier. Um, and so... I always like to try and do a little bit of spotting early on with this tank. Um, after all, you are a light tank, you have the mobility, um, and quite frankly, as a light tank, it is your job to do some spotting. Now, that does not mean YOLOing out and um, you know driving straight into the enemy reds and saying, hey, I've spotted everybody, why aren't you shooting them? Because what I want you to notice here in this game is I'm going into the middle of the map, and I'm going to slow it down here. Um, look at the mini-map in the top left. Half of my team has gone left to the ship. Um, and so at this point in time, I really should have just turned around, regrouped with my team. But I'm going to make a, a absolutely fatal mistake here. And I'm going to say, all right, we can still spot these guys up. Um, it'll help with my team and getting them to come off of the ship because I know that they're all on this side. So I'm going to pull up one more time and you can see now I'm going to get a purple enemy spotted metal there. So that means six people spotted, I believe, um, if not five. Uh, and, and so now I'm turning and running, but it's too late. They've pushed. Um, there's the gold spotting, um, and, and, and I'm taken out, um, and I was completely unhelpful to my team. I did not even get a chance to shoot in that instance, um, so it was really bad play on my part. Um, as you can see, our team is, is still pushing all the way around. So while spotting is important, um, don't do it. To the detriment of yourself um, and and the caution is at 72 kilometers per hour you can overextend yourself before you even realize it so keep a close eye on that mini map and make sure that you are staying close to your team and we'll see that in this example here as we're gonna push it into the middle again hoping to get some early spots are the heavies going up or the heavies going into town? Um, but as we're doing that, T49 has got the same thought, but he is going to YOLO and extend himself beyond his team's help. We take a big shot there, but we've drawn him into our team and he is taken out. So, um, the difference there in, in, in spotting, right? Um, so now, I'll just play out the rest of this game. Um, you can see uh, my preference when I start the game is to put the ammo on HE. Obviously, I'm driving with the ammo bar out so I can quickly change it on the run. But 
I am always looking for the rear of tanks so that we can maximize HE damage. And so I've noticed we've got two tanks here pushing the far side. Um, again, it's fairly safe for me to push on in here. Chinese 59 Patton, he's going to have a really weak rear. Well, there's over 700 damage with an HE shot. Um, and and quite honestly, this is a tank that you can afford to trade a shot for shot. Because um, you're obviously doing five to 700 versus two to 300. Um, you're going to see a lot of HE shot at you. Obviously, because you don't have a lot of armor. But again, the speed allows you to get to the rear of tanks, put them in the back side there for big numbers, and uh, then you can keep moving and get away. And, you know, my philosophy with light tanks is just don't ever stop moving. This IS is pushing on me. I'm going to switch over to heat here. I cannot pen. Um, obviously, HE. So it would only be splash damage at that point, and we're very fortunate enough to get a full roll on that heat shot. So you can see there, I think it was, what, four shots, 2,600 damage. Um, so we really maximized our damage per shot. So as we switch over to this game on Falls Creek, I want to bring to the forefront the fact that this tank has just absolutely horrible dispersion. Um, so if you think that you can snipe in this or basically be stationary and shoot at moving targets, um, you're going to be really, really disappointed to say the least. So we'll see what that looks like here. So you can see as we are getting started, loaded HE, hoping to find a light tank. And, and sure enough, here's two French tanks. If I could get a shot into the side of either one of those, then, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a big number. But um, you see that first shot. Who knows where that one went? And now we're reloading. Um, figure they've run away here. So we're going to pull forward. And um, just, I mean, there's no way this shot's going. I don't know what I'm thinking here. Um, it, it would take a miracle for that shot to go in. So all I've done is is wasted some expensive uh, shells and done no damage. And now I'm having to wait to reload to take a shot at this AMX. And um, you can see there when you do shoot on the move, if you don't basically have a tank in that entire reticle, then uh, there's a good chance you're going to miss. We are able here to, to pull forward and, and finally get a kill shot in on the AMX. But um, a bad decision on my part as, you know, they've got two tanks down there. I'm trying to help out our guy. I want to go ahead and, and shoot this Lycan in the rear. Um, as I'm shooting, however, I get rammed by the Lorraine. And, um, yeah, that's all she wrote in this game. So, poor map choice. I uh, wasn't paying attention. Went out into a couple enemy tanks. And uh, if you miss a couple shots, uh, you know, it's it's not going to end well for you or for your team. Alright guys, so on this game, uh, Alpine Stud here. And this is a complete tier 8 game. Um, you know, I'm going to push up into the light medium corner to see if we can get some spots. Um, but as this game unfolds, I'm kind of going to get trapped here to some extent. And when that happens, um, you kind of just have to peck away at some of the heavies with HE. And really the conversation I want to get into as we get quite a lucky shot through there is uh, your your ammo choice right so obviously with HE you're gonna do the most damage but as we pointed out there in the intro you only have 83 mil of pen so um, definitely any tier 9 heavy um, the front of a lot of tier 9 mediums 
you're just going to have problems penning with the HE. Um, and so then you have to, to use heat, which has a pen of 167. And um, so I think, to me, the, the most difficult part, as we get some splash damage there on both of those tanks, um, is, is deciding, really in a split second, you know, which shell you want to choose. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, we've got, we've got the FCM there. I can't pen, look at that, look how much red is there with heat. Um, and I take two shots because I was indecisive about taking my shot and I thought, well, maybe I can pen him with heat and get more damage than just doing splash damage because I'm not penning. Tiger 2, look at this. Look how much red there is. I can't pen that from the front. Um, and so you really need to, to use the tank's mobility, but I've got an IS-6 down there. Um, you know, and I'm getting shots in here. We're just pecking away small damage amounts. But when the Tiger turns his turret to me, I know I can pen the side of that 518 with heat. So this game's going to unfold. We're going to push here around the corner. Try a really difficult shot here. And like I said, um, you, you know, sniping in this tank is, is damn near impossible. But um, we've got a two-tank advantage. The love of there is a one-shot. IS-6 is down below. Tiger here at 480, so um, it's time for me to, to push. Now, you'll notice here I don't shoot, I don't shoot. I'm using my speed to get 90 degrees, and then we're putting it into the side of the tank. And we've got about uh, a very similar load time here to the RHM, so we're just going to try to fake him out a little bit. HE into the side. Real quick there, we have a game of 2,500 damage. And we could have penned the back with heat on that IS-6. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content, please hit that subscribe button. Much, much appreciated. Alright guys, Mayan Ruins. And as you can see, it's just about every single game, there's going to be a T-49 or two on it. Um, it's just a really popular tank. Obviously, with its speed, maneuverability, and big gun, it is, um, it's just really, really fun to play. And, um, you know, that's why we come to Blitz. That's why we play these games. Um, it's for these fun tanks like this. But as you can see, as I, you know, kind of tried to explain... Um, I was going to go low on this one and try to find those other two T-49s, but, but look at my team. Um, they've all primarily gone down uh, the right side, and I've got a couple here behind me. Um, and that's when the other T-49 comes up. And so, unfortunately, we get a little bit of that track. Um, there's not much you can do about that. He does the same thing. And so we're going to aim a little bit higher here. And there we go. 719. Thankfully, the IS-5 is behind me to finish him off. So we're already at 1,000 damage into this game. Um, and they've got some tanks down here. Looking at this Pershing, you know, I'm just going to do splash damage. So I take a chance with heat. We get it to go into the back and set him on fire. Now we've got Tiger 2 down here. I know I can't really pen the front. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe I can get a shot even on this Pershing or this STA. Switch over to HE, hoping to get uh, a shot into the side there, but um, only do 400 damage. And now we've got to get backed up here to safety over the crest of this bridge. Three tanks down here. I know into the side of the Tiger is heat. Um, so 
this is what I'm going at with this tank, guys. Um, making those right decisions about the armor, I mean, the ammo is, is key. Here we go. I'm willing to take a shot at this point so I can get perpendicular and put another heat shot into the back of him. And as you can see, we're already over 3k damage. Uh, we got a nice juicy target in front of us. Yeah, let's just put this one into the back side, 642. Look at this, almost 4k damage in, what was that, um, two, two and a half minute game? Um, you know, that's what this tank can do, and that's why I know you guys are out here playing it. That's why we all really enjoy this tank. So in closing, on the T-49, it's all about spotting early but not to the detriment of yourself or your team. Making sure you look at that mini-map and you're gonna get support and shots on because with such a long reload, you do need help. Um, it's not really a one-on-one -on -one brawling type of tank. Now, you need to use your speed to circle other tanks, get perpendicular, and most definitely get behind so you can put those HE shots in the rear, getting a full amount of damage. So, hope you guys really enjoy this tank, and I am so looking forward to the new Tier 9 and 10 tanks that are going to be coming out shortly. So with that, guys, have fun out there. Stay safe, get educated, not fingered. A little finger out.